Good day everyone. Have you ever thought about how many times you have made Jesus weep? Now you might think this is a strange question, but today I want to look at the times in the Bible when Jesus wept. Now a little boy was standing outside a busy mall crying. People would stop by and ask him what was wrong and he would say, I want my mummy. People felt sorry for him and gave him some rant to stop him from crying. Finally, a salesperson walked up to him and said, Don't cry, little boy. I know where your mummy is. The little boy looked up to him with tears in his eyes and said, So do I. Just keep quiet. I've got a good thing going here. <laughs> Remember when you were a child? And you would cry when you didn't get your way? Or when you were punished, you would cry as well. Then when you got older, people would tell you that big boys don't cry. I've heard that a lot in my own life. But you know, it's okay to cry. It is okay to weep. And three times in the Bible, Jesus wept. The first time it was tears of sympathy. In John 11, verse 33 to 35, we read, When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Jesus' friend Lazarus had just died. Martha and Mary needed someone to share their pain. They had lost a brother and their hearts were broken. Even though Jesus knew that Lazarus would be resurrected, he wept with those who wept. So Jesus' first tears were tears of sympathy. The second time Jesus wept were tears of struggle. Hebrews 5 verse 7 we read the following. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was hurt because of his reverence. So the weight of our sins had separated Jesus from the Father. And this is why Jesus asked the Father three times if it be possible to let this cup pass. Nevertheless, he also said, not my will, but thine be done. The third time Jesus wept with tears of sorrow. In Luke 19, verse 41 to 44, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. And let's read um, that passage together. It says the following. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace? But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you, because you did not know the time of your visitation. Now this word for weeping here means audible weeping. It means that Jesus cried out loud. It means that Jesus broke out weeping over Jerusalem. He knew that they were going to be captives. Here is Jesus, a full grown man. God in flesh, weeping out loud. We are used to seeing a child weep, but here we see Jesus weeping. And he was weeping over Jerusalem. 
Now, my question today is, if Jesus was still on this earth, would he weep over South Africa? 1 Samuel 2 verse 30 says, Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promise that your house and the house of your father should go in and out before me forever. But now the Lord declares, Far be it from me, for those who honor me I will honor, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Jesus cared about Jerusalem. He cares about our beautiful country, South Africa. Jesus was crying over Jerusalem's hardness of their hearts. Matthew 23, verse 37 to 40 says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Some of these same ones had seen Jesus do all the miracles, yet would soon be yelling, Crucify him. Don't we sometimes do the same today? Aren't we quick to forget all that Jesus has done for us? All the times he heals us, delivers us from trouble. All the times he blesses us. Jesus was saying to those people and is saying to us today, I gave you miracles, signs and wonders. I met your needs. I healed your bodies. I fed you and clothed you. But you have rejected me. The same is happening today in our South Africa. How does Jesus feel about all the hardness of people's hearts? There is a worldwide rebellion and blasphemy towards Jesus today. People are saying we will not be put under God's rule. And sometimes I ask myself, how long will God put up with this attitude? Maybe Jesus was weeping because he could foresee South Africa mocking him and rejecting him. Think about all the times that the gospel has been preached across South Africa and yet some continue to reject him. God said in Galatians 6 verse 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. I believe that there will come a day in South Africa when God will bring judgment and people will cry out to him, and he will say, as he did in Jeremiah 11, verse 10, they have turned their back to the uh, they have turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, who refused to hear my words. They have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant that I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus says the Lord: Behold, I am bringing disaster upon them that they cannot escape. Though they cry to me, I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry to the gods to whom they make offerings, but they cannot save them in the time of their trouble. What if that happens to us in South Africa? We live in a world who will tolerate nearly all religions, Accept Christianity. A world where lies will be tolerated, but not the truth. We have kicked God out of our schools. God has blessed South Africa, but we have turned our backs on Jesus. We sing God bless South Africa and Kosi Sikileli Africa. Well, he already has. In closing, we can also ask ourselves this one question. Would Jesus weep over me if he were still walking on earth today? Would he weep over my ingratitude? Would he weep over my unbelief? Would he weep over my uncaring? Would he weep over my selfishness? 
Would he weep over my laziness? Would Jesus weep when I'm ungrateful? A Chinese proverb says that an ungrateful man is like a pig walking alone under an oak tree eating acorns, never once looking up to see where the acorns were coming from. Lord, please forgive me when I whine, when I complain, when I'm unthankful, when I don't trust you. Forgive us, Lord. I don't want to make Jesus weep. Do you? Let's just pray together. Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning and I know that so many times, Lord, we've been so ungrateful. Uh, we have had an unbelief in what you can accomplish through us. We had an unbelief in your word, Lord, not believing and trusting on the promises that you have for us in your word. Lord, there was many times when, when I was selfish, when we were selfish, Lord, when we were uncaring for our other brothers and sisters. Please forgive us. We don't want to make you weep. We pray that you will give us strength to stand up, to be bold in our beautiful South Africa for you. We pray that your kingdom will come in South Africa. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen.